Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. This is Catherine Raker on location on the Chef You and I show, and we're going to be cooking with a wonderful wonder, a Rocky Israeli chef. And the name of the restaurant that we're in tonight is called the Eucalyptus. And the reason is because on this site a tree was born, a eucalyptus tree, and a restaurant came after. And we're going to be talking about a lot of wonderful fresh herbs and spices and many other things and we're going to be cooking some very unusual dishes which we are going to give you the recipes on. I hope that you'll join us tonight and enjoy our trip to Israel and to Jerusalem to this wonderful restaurant. And now we're with the chef, Chef Hassan, and he is going to explain to us some of the things that we are going to prepare tonight and that he's already prepared and how the, the actual leaves and the herbs that we use in his recipes. Chef Croissant, thank you so much for joining me tonight. And I really am excited about being here on, in your restaurant in, uh, in Israel. Okay. Welcome to Jerusalem in Israel. Thank you. And of course to the Eucalyptus restaurant. We are doing a Biblical Israeli cuisine. Okay. So, when I'm holding and smelling this herb that is sort of um, hyssop. 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 That was the brush of the Israelite leaving Egypt there, marking right. the door marking with the three with the blood of the lamb. Right. But it's also used like here in this salad. Okay. And in this pesto. Right. Here. Pesto? Okay. Yes. Pesto from hyssop. Right. And walnuts. And walnuts. And in, when you'll be in the market right. in the old city, they will sell you a bagel and you'll dip your bagel in a condiment that okay. is also dried hyssop with sesame seeds right. and sumac. Sumac. A, this leaf. This leaf that looks like geranium. Geranium. Grows right. wild in most of the world. Okay. I found it in the States. In the Midwest it's growing a lot. in the winter a lot. And uh, the food will be looks like small tiny bread. So or challah bread, like brioche. Okay. So the name in the Bible is already halamit. Halamit. Chala, halamit. In Arabic Hubeza. Okay. For the Christian people, it's a story that I told uh, the staff that was escorting the late uh, Pope when he was visiting Jerusalem. Right. Because it's not in the books. And uh, it's a story that I heard once in Cyprus and once in the Galilee from a right. very old woman telling me that uh, when there was no bread in the house of Mary, Jesus was telling her to go and to pick mellow. Now, mellow grows wild everywhere. It right. don't have price. Right. And he say, go and pay to the bakery with a bunch of hyssop. Okay. And she was feeling so ashamed, but she, wa she went there and the man took it from her hand as it was money, real money, and gave her the bread. Now, in his house, it became gold. Here. Oh, that's gorgeous. This was just picked now at night oh. behind the building here. Oh, now, wow. it's not in my garden. Uh -huh. It's just wild. Wild. Oh, that's beautiful. It does look like geranium leaves. Yes, like babies. it looks like geranium. Right. But it uh, smells like geranium. It smells like weed. Can you and, eat this And you can eat it raw. Can you, you can eat, eat it raw? raw. Do you yeah. care if I try? Please. Okay, please. I'm going to try. Yeah. I like to try the stems. Stems? 
that are a sort of sweet. You understand why they can make from that marshmallow. Oh, very nice, very nice. Yeah. So, do you, my question is on this, do you parboil this or you, do you cut it? I, I cut it. We're going to do that, right? We can do it. We can yeah. do that. And you cut it like in pieces? Small pieces. Small pieces. And then you and steam then it? And then I'm sauteing Saute. garlic or onion. Okay, garlic or onion. In olive oil. And then I'm just giving it a few minutes. Right. Black pepper, salt, and that's, that's all. That's and it's all? ready. Yes. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. Now you've made me some so that I could try it. Yes. I want to tell you what I think. Okay? So let's put this over here. Okay, there is okay. another very special dish that maybe right. we'll decide to do it. Okay. But it will be your decision. Or you can make maybe both. Okay. This is our maybe um, signature dish or highlight is stuffed figs. Stuffed figs. Figs stuffed with chicken breast Ooh. in sweet and sour tamarind sauce. Oh, wow. And I will tell you why tamarind called tamarind. Oh, really? Can I try this? Can you tell me what it is? Tell me what's in here. So that that's beautiful leaves, right. fresh, and right? A olive oil and garlic. Well, there's no garlic. You no garlic in there because you all know that I'm allergic to garlic on our, but I do cook with yeah. it. I just don't eat it. So we do, we did it with a little bit onion, and that's the way that we'll do it when we'll cook. Now what inside. did you what did you put on the top of it? Tahina. Tahina. This is tahina. Okay. Tahina is sesame seed butter. Sesame seed butter. Yeah, you can from Te sesame seed. Tahina, right? Yes, tahina. Yeah. When you mix it with uh, chickpeas, you uh -huh. make hummus. Hummus, right? Yes. When you mix it with sugar, you make halva. Okay. So it's very special thing that you can use it in completely different things. You can add Go ahead. Just, yes. Oh, so you put it in there before. What does it has? What has the taste is like? Uh, a little sour. What's the sour? So there is a little bit lemon in the tahina, but oh. the red stuff. This red stuff here. This is sumac. Sumac. And sumac is sour. Sour. That's what's giving the sour taste to it. Yes. How much, when you're making this, do you only use a little sumac? Yes, just a little. Just a little. Yeah. Just a little. This is, it almost has the consistency like spinach. Yeah, but, but it's very earthy. Very it's very milky. earthy. I really like the, the taste of it. It's probably very healthy for you too, right? Very healthy. They know now that it's one of the healthiest things. In the winter, we use, in the summer, excuse uh -huh. me, we use um, porcelain. Porcelain, it's another, it's another sort of wild wheat that was in the summer as well mm -hmm. in the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in, in the Latin name is portulaca. Portulaca. It's a succulent that the leaves are fleshy leaves, uh -huh. small ones, sometimes wider. And uh, that's considered today the richest vegetable with omega-3. Really? Yeah. Do you have some of it to show us? I will bring some. Okay. It's the end of the season, but maybe I can find a little bit in the garden and I will right. show you. Now you do your own garden, am I correct? Yes. But I'm using um, the big garden of God. Right. It's around Jerusalem. Right. Especially okay, for this, for now example. Now what is this? This is sage. Sage. We have the regular sage, that small sage. Right. This sage, it's not smelling like sage. It doesn't smell. It does it doesn't smell like sm sage. Yeah. It blooms like menorah, like chandelier. Right. So it's called also Moria, like the Mount of the Moriah. Right. And we are stuffing these leaves like vine leaves. Vine leaves. Or they will be used as a bed for fish. Okay. When we are making a so on that fish note, fillet. On that note, we have to take a short break. And we'll be right back on The Chef You and I. Yeah. Oh, hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey. Where have you been? I lost my cat. Oh, that's not right. Yeah, so I made this cat magnet to try and get him back. Cool. 
Does it work? Kinda. Nice. Yeah, but that's not my cat. Gotta keep working on it. See ya. See ya. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Get started on your own inventions or just play some games at inventnow.org. Chef You and I show, and we're in Israel, and we're learning how to make this wonderful dish. I know how. Okay. Now, what are you going to teach me, Chef Ozan? To the left. Okay. And what we are doing now? Okay. Is the ceremony of the magluba. So the magluba. I will teach you later on how to do it. Oh, okay. Make it. So you mean? Don't touch it. It's very hot. With okay. With the right hand, seven wide circles from left to right seven like then sir? make a good wish okay. after the wish hold the handles don't touch here you'll jump okay and just lift it lift slowly it up, slowly up like this okay right away right. when swing back here turn it to the camera and show it to and him smile turn it a little bit turn it a little okay now okay. seven times seven ready times and they're helping us to count okay you gotta count one, one two, two three, three. Four, five, six, seven. Seven. Make a good wish. Seven. Seven wishes? <laughs> when you are ready. Ready? Slowly. Up, Slowly up. up. Just up. It's empty. Empty, empty, empty. Wonderful. Turn to the camera and smile. Okay. And this is the best part. That's this the best part? Me. Okay. For you? For what? For you? You'll get the Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and what is this dish called? Called magluba or nahafohu. The meaning is upside down. Upside down. Now you know why. Makaluba. The influence is a sort of Jewish, Iraqi or Persian right. uh, dish for Shabbat. That Shabbat? We cooked overnight. Okay. The way of turning it upside down is very Palestinian. Okay. So we are mixing all these cultures. Oh, these are beautiful. It smells to die for. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back on The Chef You and I in just a moment. The odds of a child becoming a professional golfer? One in 140,000. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism? One in 150. You know the odds of autism. Now learn the signs. Go to autismspeaks.org. How do you convince a 14-year-old girl that hair doesn't matter? When the diagnosis is childhood cancer, where can parents turn? 
CureSearch.org can help. It's run by doctors and scientists whose research has led to an overall cure rate of 78%. You're not as alone as you feel. Recycling a glass bottle saves enough energy to run the TV you're watching for one full hour. Recycle. It's the everyday way to save the world. I was hanging out with some people. Now I realize I shouldn't have. The work was so hard. It was just going fast, fast, fast. I got kicked out of school, and nobody cared about me, so I don't care. I sort of got messed up into gangs and other stuff. School was very difficult. I was expelled from school. I mean, the one person who really got me to go back into school was my friend Kevin. At my friend's graduation, I'm going to be the loudest one there. Because if you don't have anybody while you're in school, then there's not really a way to get through it. Catherine Raker of The Chef, you and I, and I'm with a very famous chef from Austria, right? Gunter Biedermann. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you very, very much. Well. Thank you. And we are at the Tischby Winery and Restaurant? Yes, Tischby Winery and Restaurant, correct, in uh, Benjamina. What was the name of that place? Benjamina. Benjamina, right? In Israel, right? And I'm looking at a creation of sourdough bread. Is it wheat? Is it what type? Organic whole wheat. Okay. Organic whole wheat with sourdough and silan. Silan is a date honey. Okay. And what did we, we had, we're going to show our audience some of the dishes that you created for us. What were they? Now, there were two, there was, to start, we had starters. Can you tell us what we had? Yeah, you had a, a local variation of uh, salads, which are custom here in Israel. You found uh, lentil, salad, lentil salad, salad, uh, eggplant, so burnt eggplants, uh, pepper salad. You had uh, tahini, which is a sesame paste. And you also had olives. You had amiri, feta cheese. is a special uh, sheep feta cheese, which comes from the north of Israel. Baked tomatoes and a special olive oil made from Syrian olives. Then you had um, Smoked salmon, smoked salmon, which we do here in our winery itself. We are having our own smoking oven and uh, we do every day fresh salmon, which we smoke for around 40 minutes. Then you had uh, a tuna filly a la Wellington with uh, puff pastry and some mushrooms and a green peppercorn sauce. You also ate um, arancini di riso, which are fried rice balls with uh, mozzarella filling and uh, a light uh, vegetable paste uh, tomato sauce. And you also had my ha, famous fish sausages. Yeah, this is an absolute novelty here also for Israel. We are using uh, our salmon as well to combine it with some rice and herbs and uh, mince it, fill it in the special castings, which are kosher and uh, vegan friendly. And we smoke the sausages as well, and grill them later on in the oven and serve them with chips and some uh, pecan sauce. And that's what the things you have eaten so far. The chocolate souffle is on the way. You'll see in a couple of minutes. I've got to tell you, this is a very special place. You've been here how long now? I'm working here now a year, a year and a half, approximately, yeah. Were you surprised when he came to get you? A bit, yeah. <laughs> Why? So what did he do to hire you? Actually, I was working for, for a big hotel in Tel Aviv for five years in an executive position. And I'm living here very locally. So I was driving every day, Tzichon, Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv, Tzichon. And one day, Colonel Dishpi called me and said, hey, I heard you're a chef, come over and we talk. Said, okay, so talking can hurt and yeah, we made a good deal. And yeah, I'm still here and I continue working here. It's close to home, it's all what I can do. And Colonel is an excellent partner as well for business. I can't complain. Do you have a cookbook that's coming out? For me, not yet, no. <laughs> That's uh, some work in progress, but it will take a little bit more time. Do you know, it's really funny, from all the chefs from around the world that I see and I meet, uh, they're all making a new cookbook. Is that, it's because, now what's your favorite dish that you love to make? 
It's my smoked salmon. And the sausages together. That's my favorite dishes. <laughs> nah, you're testable things. Nah, see, I'm not such a uh, publicity chef. Uh, for me, it's cooking something very personal. I like to keep it on a, on a level that I can uh, identify myself. The food, I don't know what the customer is willing to eat and pay for, which is very important for me. So, yeah, I, I would like to keep it a little bit um, more slow, but therefore mm -hmm. I can produce the best pasta uh, products and uh, dishes. And I have always someone to eat it. So this is the most important thing for me, yeah. Now, are you married and have children? Yes, I married a very lovely Israeli woman for many, many years. I dragged her out of Israel for years. I mean, we lived in Austria and Australia. But now, now we're back and I uh, have three of my lovely kids as well, which live now all here in Israel. And yeah, we have actually a very good time, yeah. Well, this is a wonderful partnership of the two of you, uh, creating the restaurant and the winery together. Yeah. And I think we're going to have a chocolate souffle. Is that what you're making? Souffle, yes. It's a Valrona chocolate, a gunacha, 80%. And I will serve it with uh, real ice cream. Mm -hmm. And also a little bit of uh, chocolate ice cream, which we also make with a uh, co-production with an ice cream maker. Mm -hmm. And you will sample this. It's a very nice winter dish now. And yeah, just can say enjoy. Dig in. Again. I can't wait. We can't wait to try it. And I and I really want to thank you today. Is that is that it right there? No, no. This is actually um, uh, a mousse. It's a cold dessert. It's a tahini. Okay. Tahini mousse. Like uh, the same tahini you ate actually as a first as a starter, which is lemon oil, salt. This is a sweet variation of it. it comes with honey, also some silan. Silan is a date honey, sugar of course, and egg. And we're producing also a mousse from that. So it's a little bit weird combination, even for me, but uh, it has a nutty flavor. It's sweet. You wouldn't recognize as anything that else. And it's a very interesting dish as well. If you would like, to uh, put some also for you to taste later on. Yeah. One of the things I want to ask you is you're starting dinners here at uh, the restaurant in the wine area, am I correct? Sorry, can I say please? I said you're starting to serve dinners here. Yes. That's the next thing to come up. We have uh, quite a large place here for functions and we also opening the restaurant now at night and yep that's uh, excited yeah. about it yeah. it's yeah. my job <laughs> job of course <laughs> right so anyhow let's go see and taste it and see what we think okay of course Let's we enjoy. loved it we loved every everything before so we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back on the chef you and i
They say every picture tells a story. Last year, 31,000 stories were left unfinished because of HIV AIDS, and 160,000 were cut short by breast cancer. But this is about DVT, deep vein thrombosis, and its potentially fatal complication, pulmonary embolism, that ended 300,000 stories last year. More than AIDS and breast cancer combined. DVT is a blood clot, usually found in the leg, that can break loose and travel to the lungs where it can be fatal. Some risk factors include obesity, recent surgery, restricted mobility, respiratory failure, and advanced age. There's one story I know by heart. It's about an NBC correspondent, a young husband and father named David Bloom, who died of DVT-related complications while covering the Iraq War. I'm Melanie Bloom, and I tell David's story so others will be able to write happier stories and reduce their risk. So please talk to your doctor about your risk of DVT and visit preventdvt.org. Uh, hello. Uh, yes. Can I ask a few questions about the apartment on Park Street? What was your name? My name? Uh, my name is Juan Hernandez. It's been rented. Oh, it's gone. Hello, my name is Sanjay Kumar. I am calling about the apartment on Park Street. It's not available. Not available? Hello, my name is Tyrone Washington. I'm calling about the apartment on Park Street. Just been rented. Hello, I am Chen Ling. My name is Khalid Bin Ali. I'm Tuan Vo. Hello, my name is Moshe Goldberg. I use a wheelchair. It's gone. Not available. All right. Thank you. Yes, hello, my name is Graham Wellington. I'm calling about the apartment for rent on Park Street. Is that still available? Yes, it is. What oh, is? Yes. Really? Housing discrimination is illegal. If you think you've been a victim because of your race, color, national origin, sex, religion, disability, or family status, call us. Fair housing. It's not an option. It's the law. Life's this hard, graduating can be even harder. But you can help Ativa and the students in your community make it through by visiting boostup.org. We're back on the chef, you and I, and we're getting ready, and we're going to learn how to do mellow. Wonderful, a spinach, a spinach uh, dish that's very simple to make. So join us in the kitchen now and learn how to make it. The first thing that we're going to do, are we going to cut these first? Yes, we would cut these. Okay, you have already cut up the onions, right? And these are figs? Yes, we are not using not, them. We're not now. using them now. Okay, so the, the ingredients are melon, onions, olive oil and salt and pepper salt and pepper okay so let's what do we do first now okay be generous generous like this maybe no more a little, little more. more you like the oil, oil. right oh, okay <laughs> olive oil okay so, don't you have to put that on the heat for a few minutes all right warm that up in the meantime we will start to cut the melon. Okay. And the best way that I'm showing people always also when you cut parsley. Right. Put half like this and half like this. Oh, very the interesting. This will help you cutting it evenly. Mm -hmm. Like this. Like that. Okay, and then mm -hmm. them and... That's really beautiful. So that's how you get the look yeah. that you're trying to accomplish, right? Do you usually tell jokes when you're doing this? Yes, especially when I'm cutting. Especially when you're cutting, Sometimes. right? <laughs> I have to ask you. my finger. I know. Have you ever cut your finger? No. No? And, and most chefs I know, they don't even look. I'm that's, the reason. that's part I of it. Pay that I'm looking at you and I'm I know. I know you are. Boy. That's what scares me. Yeah. I had a chef do that once and he, he, and then he cut his finger. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that makes it. 
So on the onions, you don't chop them up really, really fine. Yes, not really. Not really fine. Put that in there, right? Can you get a picture of that or not? Can you get a close up of the pan? Maybe? Okay. Now are you, you gonna let me try? Are you gonna let me try? Please. Okay. If you are not cutting your fingers. I'm not going to cut my fingers. And I this. even have nails. I know how. Let me try. Please. Okay, you okay, you ready? Very fine. I'm not as neat as you are. Mm. 20 minutes here in the kitchen, you'll do it. Yeah, I know. Wait Better a minute. than most of them. Most of your guys. Most women hold it like this. I've learned how to hold it like this. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, and, and then, then you, can, you have to hide. Oh, I know, hide these. Like this. I know, like this. Okay. Okay. Is that enough? Could you, can I ask a question? What if you just did it like this? Would it be the same? Yes, especially when they're young and fresh, but the stamps should be cut finely. Oh, finely? Yes. But these, but these, these you can. be, yeah, uh, just even. Like, like that. Like yeah. Right. It wouldn't matter, right? That would be pretty, wouldn't it? Yep. Okay. So now you've got the onions in there, right? Yes. And no? Almost? Almost. Okay, so you saute them until you get them a real light, light of gold, not golden, not golden brown. brown, golden brown? Yeah. Or maybe a minute or two on a high yes. fire? Yep. Right. And then we add this, right? Yes. So we're going to take so that we'll over there. It. Right. Sure. We're going to adding that. Come on, we'll go over there and add it. Can you bring the camera over here? Let's bring the camera over. All right. And then I can just pour that in, right? Yeah, he's going to do that. Okay, let's look at it right now. Okay, I can show it to the camera if you want. Okay. Now it's going to saute. Just simple. Simple? What are you adding now? Black pepper. Black pepper and a little bit of salt. A little bit of salt. Okay. How long did it learn did, for you to do this? You're still learning? <laughs> That's beautiful. Now you would use garlic in this, but for me I you used use onions. Yes. Onions. And um but I would use garlic and onion. Garlic and onion. It gives it a different flavor, yes. doesn't it? And you can add also something like this. But it will be just giving some Oh and the aroma. 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 Did you ever get burned? Do you ever get burned when you no. do that? No. I'm not sure if I want to try. It's a secret powder. Secret powder? The temple time. The temple and the time? the camera likes it very much. Oh, it likes it very much. Okay. You don't really put your hand in it. You throw it towards it. Am yes. I right? Yes. Okay. So how many minutes do you actually do this? Four or five? Like this. Now it depends. Depends? Sometimes they're more uh, delicate and they will be ready. Ready? Sometimes I will be add a little bit of water. Uh -huh. In this case, I will add a little bit of olive oil. Uh -huh. To make it a little bit of uh, Moist. moisture. Well, it depends. There is some species, so it depends where you are cutting it. Uh -huh. This we will, by the way, when you were sitting here, I sent someone to pick them here. Oh, in yeah, I know, in the garden. Okay. Okay. So, let's uh, plate it. Tahina. Tahina? The cup, the sumac. Sumac. Okay. Yeah. 
check that. Uh-huh. Oh, that's beautiful. And then you put this on the top of it? Yes, and we put one. One leaf? And what is it? And how much? Just a little? Just a little. I'll cut the other one again. Um, yeah. Thank you. Let's give some idea camera. for the camera. Voila. Voila. <laughs> That's beautiful. Now see how simple, folks, that was to make. You can do this in your kitchen, too. You don't have to come to Israel, but we'd like you to, no, you right? Have to you have to Israel. come to Israel, too. Because the real test of this right? is in Israel. Is Israel, right? And it was right from the garden. Your, to, your, your table. to your table easily in a few minutes. It's simple, it's healthy, and it's great for you. I can't thank you enough for showing us how to do this very much. Okay, let's remind people that it right? was used in Jerusalem right? during the Independence War right? as food. When there was no food in Jerusalem, they use it like this. It's right? very rich in right? nutrition and vitamins. Right. Right. They use the big leaves to stuff them like vine leaves. Right. And the most secret recipe, you know what was it? What was the secret recipe? Meatballs without any meat. Meatballs without meat. That's unreal. That is absolutely. And this, folks, is absolutely delicious. Believe me. You can find this recipe, by the way, on our website at www.theshefuni.com. And do you have a website or Facebook? Yes. What's your website? The website is www.z and then other course, eucalyptus.com. Wow, that's great. You know why eucalyptus? Yes, it's a wonderful tree. The tree of I planted this you planted tree it fifty years ago and in our garden. And it's We're celebrating there? a day that called Tu Bishvat. It's like Earth Tu Bishvat. Uh -huh. yeah, it's from the Bible. Uh -huh. Everyone should plant a tree. I planted eucalyptus tree. How long did it took fifty years to it grow? Was no, <laughs> it's I have another one that is ten, twelve years, and now it's huge, huge. huge. Yeah, but this one was fifty years ago on this special festival. Uh huh. And uh, the restaurant start under the tree, so we used to sell under the tree, and we close like a hut, and the tree used to climb out of the ceiling. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And we've experienced, and we have pictures from all of your, you're going to try it, right? Are you going to make me no, try it? You're going to try sure. it. I'm going to try it. So we want to let everybody taste this with us. Uh, and you say in Israel, what before you Beg eat? Teavon. Beg Teavon. Teavon. Delicious. Delicious. And thank you so much for joining us tonight on The Chef You and I, with Chef Maison, at the Eucalyptus Restaurant. And thank you so very much. It's such thank an you. honor. Such next, an honor. Next year in Jerusalem, this is a blessing that we're saying uh -huh. every high holiday. I the Shana Haba'a Yerushalayim. Shana Haba'a Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim. Wonderful. Right. Thank you. So I will be waiting for. Oh, good. Thank you. For you. for you all to come. Thank you, and good night.